So in this video, which is part two of my looking at the analog discovery two, we're going to take a look at oscilloscope probe compensation, and I'll describe what compensation is, why it matters, the issue I've had with the supplied probes, and look at a pair of probes that actually work. So you know we've got our analog discovery two here. I've got the uh, BNC adapter plugged onto it. It's got of course the two channel inputs for the scope, channel one and channel two, and it's got the waveform outputs over here, wave one and wave two. I've added these labels myself, actually just printed out some labels and stuck them on the little PCB just to make things a little bit easier. So we, we can see here, uh, I think this is the original probes uh, that you know, came with it hooked up. And I've got the bodies here rotated so the adjustment hole here is up so I can get a tool in there to adjust them. Uh, I've got the hat taken off the probe and the little metal tip is pushed into the center conductor on the waveform output BNC jack here on the ground are just clipped on to keep them out of the way. So basically I'm just taking the waveform output from uh, waveform 1 and it's looping all the way around and coming into channel 1 on the scope. A thing to keep in mind is if you compensate a probe on channel 1 it may not be correctly compensated on channel 2 and vice versa. So the yellow uh, and the blue on here is important. The oscilloscope on the Discovery 2 and most digital scopes I've used use yellow as channel 1 and blue as channel 2. So once I get these calibrated or a set of probes that will actually calibrate, later on I'll want to always use the yellow on channel 1 that's where I compensate it, or compensate it and the blue on channel 2. So let's dive in and take a look at the little booklet that came with the set of probes I've got. So these are P6100 probes that have been supplied, they're 100 megahertz. Uh, there's a little manual here that came with them, a little four-page manual, that, and basically just shows the parts here. There's an adjustment tool, there's what's called the hat that plugs on. It's got a clippy lead that'll poke out. It's got a ground lead here. It's got some colored rings so that you can put them on to make it yellow and blue. Uh, there's a little spring clip thing here, and these are interesting. This little spring clip can push down basically over the ground ring right here and keep the length from the probe tip to here about the same as the length from here to ground. On real high speed signals, having this short length here and this very long length on the ground lead of this cable here becomes a problem. It, it can generate false signals, noise, artifacts that, that really aren't happening in the circuit. And it's got to do with how fast electricity travels in a conductor, uh, and there being a shorter path for the signal than there is for the ground. Uh, anyhow, you know, this is what came with mine. There's uh, a little sheet here on frequency response. These are 100 megahertz probes. There's going to be some drop-off. There always is with, with probes. Uh, but this talks about frequency compensation, what I've been talking about. And basically, before taking any measurements using a probe, First check the compensation of the probe and adjust it to match the channel inputs. So you're literally adjusting the probe to match the input characteristics of the oscilloscope channel. The oscilloscope, the oscilloscope, those uh, change. So if you're moving probes between scopes, you need to recompensate. A lot of scopes have an output directly on the scope that you can just clip the lead to. Uh, to get a compensation signal, it's a square wave at some frequency, a few volts peak to peak. Uh, most oscilloscopes, as it says here, have a square wave reference signal available at a terminal on the front panel used to compensate the probe. Connect the probe to the signal source on your scope. In this case, we're going to use the W1 and W2 outputs of the uh, Discovery 2, Analog Discovery 2, to produce those square waves. Set the probe to 10x. That's the, the next thing, is you really, for almost any measurement you ever do, you want to use the scope in 10x mode. Uh, 10x mode gives you much higher input resistance so you're not loading the the signal you're you're you know the signal you're testing you're not loading it down as much by by running at 10x and compensation really only works at 10x and then you adjust the trimmer until seeing a flat uh, on the waveform so you can see here the waveform curls down you can see here the waveform curls up and you can see here something that's adjusted nice and clean where the signal is nice and straight uh, I've seen some people on various forums say, you, you know, when I get to real high speed signals, I'm not seeing the full signal peak to peak. Well, you, you know, there's a frequency versus voltage rating. The scope probe has capacitance. The input of the oscilloscope has capacitance. And that loads the signal a bit. So 
it, you know, it's just part of learning to use in a scope. It's kind of learning to compensate for those kind of things. Uh, it talks about the accessories. We've kind of kind of already hit on these. There's a slide switch on the probe that sets 10x or 1x for compensation. We want it in 10x. And I'd say 99% of the measurements you're ever going to make, you're going to make in 10x. There's a ground lead. There's the what they're calling a hook tip. It was a hat back in the day. Uh, for me, there's the BNC with the adjuster. There's some kind of an adjustment tool that comes with it. I've not had a lot of luck using the adjustment tools that come with these P6100 probes. Uh, I've got one that came that has a little metal tip in the end that tends to work better, and one that's all plastic that really doesn't. If you feel like nothing's happening when you turn, it basically, I think, means the tool is not engaging with a little trimmer capacitor in there. There's that ground spring for high-frequency measurement. There's a little sleeve that'll push over the actual tip with a couple of raised pieces to help keep it from slipping around. If you're like looking at IC pins, this can be really useful because it'll basically lock the tip onto that IC pin and the marker rings. Uh, finally, we get to the back sheet here, and this is probably the most important one here, is the P6100. It's rated for 100 megahertz. It's rated for 3.5 nanoseconds rise time, but I don't know if that's per volt, per millivolt, per, you know, I just don't know what that's actually measured against. Uh, you can see here where I talked about the 1x and the 10x on the scope. If you're using 1x, you've got 1 mega ohm between the probe tip and ground, which sounds like a lot, but in a high speed circuit, that can be a fair amount of loading, honestly. And at 10x, you're putting on 10 mega ohms uh, from the probe tip to ground. And then you know, it's 10 times the resistance, so it's 10 times less current flow in the probe, uh, potentially. So, you know. 10x is better for almost everything you're going to measure. I keep saying it. The input capacitance of the probe itself is some in one x is going to be between 70 and 120 picofarads. That's a somewhat largeish load. For the 6100 at 10x, that drops down to 10 to 35 picofarad. Actually, I'm, we're right here. Uh, 13 to 17 picofarad. Let me take that back. So at one x, we've got a large load here, 70 to 120 picofarads. That's essentially putting a capacitor in parallel across the signal you're trying to measure. You know, capacitor from that signal to ground. At 10x, that capacitance is much lower uh, for the 6100 probe. Uh, but here's the compensation range. Here's what becomes important. At 10x, the probe should, the adjustment on the probe should provide between 10 and 35 picofarads as you adjust that little trimmer cap. I believe on the probes I've got that aren't working, this is only running maybe 10 to 20 or 10 to 25 picofarads. And I think that's why I can't get them fully compensated. I've seen a couple different forum posts that basically acknowledge the same thing. So I think this is, you know, the probes I've got, uh, why they fail is the compensation range isn't wide enough. Uh, humidity matters. The higher the humidity, the more potential leakage there is. Uh, you know, operating up to 3,000 meters, it's interesting there's an operate in altitude, there always is. Uh, they're 110 centimeters long. They supposedly meet this IEC 61010-031 safety rating. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. These are inexpensive probes. I've just ordered a second set of these P6100s on Amazon for $12. A set of two probes with the accessories. It's very inexpensive. Uh, I just don't know. And then there's, of course, an accessory kit here. So let's just recap quick back through this. Uh, what did I want to point out here? Keep in mind the shape of the waveforms. If this edge isn't square, it's undercompensated. If it pokes up like this, it's overcompensated. Or maybe I've got those backwards, but it's not compensated. You want to see a square wave. Uh, there's a little adjustment on the BNC end here on these probes. Uh, we've got the ratings. We're going to be testing in the configuration I started out describing here. I've got the yellow probe on channel 1 and the yellow probe coming around to the output of waveform 1. I've got the channel 2 probe, the blue one, on the channel 2 input to the scope and coming around to the wave uh, 2 output. And just so you can see it here, here's a picture of the adjustment tool down into the little adjustment hole. Right, be then rotating that to get the probe compensated. So I think with that little introduction, let's jump in and look at actual compensation. 
So I've got the uh, analog discovery 2 plugged into the USB. It's powered up. I've got waveforms open here and it's connected. And let's walk through the setup for this. Uh, the first thing I want to do is go to WaveGen. And I want to look at, uh, in this case we're going to look at channel 1 here. And I want to set it to a square wave. We can leave the frequency. The 1 kilohertz frequency is fine. Uh, I want to change the amplitude a bit though. I want to change it to 2 volts. I just think that's a little bit easier uh, to work with. Not that it honestly matters, but I, I always go with 2 volts. I'm going to change to channel 2. And I'm going to make the same changes on channel 2. I want to be in a square wave. And I'm going to give it 2 volts peak to peak. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run both of these. So they're both running and outputting uh, the square waves. Let's go back and let's open up the scope. Uh, and if we run the scope, we should see those. Let's make some adjustments here. So the first thing I need to do is I've got the probes in 10x. I need to change the attenuation on both probes to be 10x. I don't know why it doesn't default to 10x, but it doesn't. So there's both of them set to 10x. And you can already see on the compensation here for both channels that I've got this curve on the front. Or that should really be a square wave. It should look very much... Can I change the display here? Apparently not, but it should have very nice square edges or as close as we can get it and it doesn't. So I'm going to make a couple other changes here. Uh, those are both set to 10x. They're set to 500 millivolts per division. So there's plus 2 volts, there's minus 2 volts. I'm going to go ahead and turn channel 2 off. We can see the yellow is channel 1. Let's go ahead and zoom in here a bit and get a look at this. So this really should come up and be square. And now I'm going to take the adjustment tool and I'm going to get into that little trimmer capacitor on the, the probe. And if I can get the screwdriver to drop in, and I'm going to rotate it through its full rotation. So we can get it to look really bad there. And we've hit one end of the rotation. And I can tweak and tweak, and you can see that's the highest I can get it. I can't get it to be square, and I should be able to get it up above the 2-volt line here. Uh, you kind of saw that in, in that, that uh, picture file we looked at. Uh, I've closed that. Where the compensation could peak up or it could peak down. So this is the problem with these probes that came with it, is I can't get it fully compensated. And, and that really kind of bothers me. Let's turn off channel 1 and turn on channel 2. And I'll move the adjustment tool over to the blue probe. And same thing. You can see here that, you know, the full range of rotation, that's as high as I can get it. And it drops all the way down to here. And this to me is unacceptable. I've already opened up a support ticket with the company I bought. Uh, the kit through, the, the analog discovery 2 through, to ask about maybe getting replacement probes. I've seen forums where people have talked about this and had luck with it. We'll see what happens. Uh, but here I am. Uh, the probes that came with it, I can't fully compens compensate. And that just, you know, it just doesn't work for me. I need to be able to get a little bit a better looking signal here. The whole idea of this analog discovery 2, or one of the things I like about it, is the interface you're looking at. I can use it on the PC. As we're shooting videos, it gives me a really quick and easy way to capture video uh, of, you know, the waveforms, etc. It just, you know, it seemed like a nice tool for this kind of stuff. So anyhow, uh, I'll be back in a second and we'll look at a set of probes at work. So just as a quick reminder, we looked at this sheet earlier. The idea with the compensation is you should be able to adjust the probe to where the knee bends down and the knee bends up above you know, in this case, where we're measuring 2 volts, and the same thing on the minus 2 volts, you get a nice square wave. And on the bad set of probes, the knee only ever bent down, and we couldn't push it even all the way up to get a square wave, let alone above. So I've got a, a set of good probes on here. I've intentionally tweaked them so that they're not in compensation. Let me turn off channel 2, and we'll get in here, and we'll compensate channel 1. Again, these are P6100s. It's the same probe, the same manufacturer. And so I turn the adjustment, you'll see that I can actually get up above. And I can get pretty 
nice little square away with it. And then that looks pretty well compensated to me. Uh, you know, I'm happy with that. Let's turn on channel 2. Turn off channel 1. And let's do the same thing on channel 2. And if I can... Having a hard time keeping the, the, the adjustment tool engaged in the a little trimmer pot. I know you can... There we go. It can get just up above a little bit. But again, I can get a square wave out of it. And I'm happy with that. That's pretty decent compensation. So we can see that it's swinging to plus 2 volts to minus 2 volts. Uh, I turn on channel 1. And off 2, you can see again, it's swinging the full plus and minus 2 volts. If we look at the wave gen outputs, I've got it amplitude at 2 volts, so it's going to swing plus 2 and minus 2. Let's wrap this one up here. And I'll see you in a future video.